Well, a woman in Oregon is suing a Catholic hospital for professional malpractice because of what she says happened during so-called gender-affirming care. 33-year-old Camille Caffell says that a plastic surgeon violated her duty of reasonable care when performing a double mastectomy for not discussing the procedure's risks at the time of the surgery. Caffell identified as non-binary. Additionally, the lawsuit against Providence Milwaukee Hospital alleges that it did not obtain proper mental health clearance. The lawsuit comes on the heels of the release of the Vatican's document, Dignitas in Fita, which in part condemns transgenderism and sex change surgery, calling it a grave violation of human Which dignity. So and joining us now with more is Mary Rice Hassan, Cato Byrne Fellow in Catholic Studies at the Ethics and Public Policy Center and Director of the Person and Identity Project. Mary, good to be with you today. Uh, when we read about this lawsuit, I mean, many of us were, were pretty shocked. We had no idea that Catholic hospitals were performing these types of procedures um, that clearly go against the church's position. How can they do that and still deem themselves a Catholic institution? Well, they shouldn't be doing these procedures, and that's clear, and it's something that the bishops are uh, are taking pains to address because there now is going to be a revision of the ethical and religious directives that bind Catholic healthcare institutions, which the previous version of those directives did not directly address many of the questions that come up in terms of hormonal or surgical intervention. It, it outlawed sterilization, but some of these other things uh, certain healthcare organizations would would claim a uh, sort of a, an agnosticism that they weren't sure whether or not they could do these. But really, we know from Catholic teaching that these kinds of interventions are they're wrong, they're harmful to the person, and you end up with these situations like uh, what this detransitioner has experienced, where uh, she was um, lost her breasts and and went underwent all sorts of interventions that caused serious harm to her. So it's unfortunate, but, but the reality is there are some Catholic healthcare institutions that have gone against Catholic teaching and have performed these sorts of interventions. Yeah, and that was going to be my next question, Mary, is, you know, did you, do you think this is an isolated incident or is this potentially happening at other Catholic hospitals? Yeah, one of the things that's problematic is we have a lot of Catholic healthcare in this country, which is a great thing. But as many of these healthcare um, institutions, whether it's Providence or Franciscan, or the, as they've expanded and gone into mergers with other hospitals, there's a complexity in the legal arrangements, and sometimes there's political pushback. But I think the bigger problem is that for many of these larger healthcare chains or networks, that many times their board, their lay board, has lost the vision, so they may say they're still operating in the Catholic tradition and use Catholic in their language or maybe in their imagery, but, but for all practical purposes, they have abandoned the Catholic ethical framework. So it's unfortunately more, um, more prevalent than you might think, and uh, even in writing in Catholic healthcare journals, you see healthcare practitioners defending these sorts of interventions. So I think there's a lot of education that needs to be done. And uh, hopefully we won't see too much, too many more of these sorts of things happening. Absolutely. We don't have a whole lot of time left, but I'm wondering, you know, even non-for-profit hospitals, right, they need to make money. And these surgeries and other so-called gender-affirming care procedures can be very costly and in some cases ongoing. What part do you think that money plays into any of this at all, if at all? Yeah, I think money has been a big driver, but I think that's going to backfire because to the extent that hospitals have sponsored gender clinics or have been willing to allow their surgeons to perform these these kinds of interventions, as the pendulum has swung back and people have become aware of just simply from a medical perspective how harmful these interventions are, you're going to see a lot more medical malpractice claims. So that promise of easy money, which may have lured in certain healthcare providers and, and hospital networks, I think is going to prove to be the Achilles heel uh, because it really is, is just going to backfire because bad medicine is going to be costly. Absolutely. Mary, uh, quickly, wondering about this. I mean, can these hospitals, can they lose their standing um, with the church or um, lose any accreditations for these actions? Sure. The bishop within his own diocese is uh, has the authority to to judge whether someone can use that Catholic label. Now, this is complicated by the fact that, again, many of these healthcare networks are across multiple states. 
and the the corporate documents are not always clear. And then there's the question of, of whether there's goodwill. Are they willing to listen to the authority of the bishop? Are they really committed to that Catholic identity? Or are the leaders of those healthcare networks more interested in just operating as the typical, unfortunately, secular uh, healthcare institutions that are prioritizing not the well-being of patients and the principle of doing no harm and, and doing good, but rather political expediency and perhaps easy money. Yeah, well, Mary, thank you so much for coming on and sorting this all out and for all of your insights. We really appreciate it. God bless. You're welcome. Thanks.